thanks everyone for coming. Um, so we will call the meeting to order at uh, 2.07. So has everybody had time to take a look at the agenda? And I'd like to request a change. I'd like to swap the approved amend, oh, I mean, sorry, the approved minutes, so I can have a little while to look at these, and then put public input up at the front where it usually is. Um, like swap okay. places. Yeah, 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 okay. So, and, I, and we touched on this briefly, um, and the reason I know that I had done it last week as well, um, the reason that we put, or that I moved public input to the end of the meeting is that um, I think it's important for us as a board to move through the necessary tasks that we have to perform as the meeting progresses. And what has, I think, tended to happen is that as public input starts and the conversation tends to move in various directions um, All right, then, but we switched it last week, so I'm just asking you switch it this week, and I understand going forward with your, your reason. Okay. All right. All right. Um, and uh, so with that, are there any amendments to the agenda? Well, just that's what. All right. So, Robert, would you like to make a motion to, well, uh, well to I Janine, can. yeah. I'd like to make a motion to swap number two, I'm sorry, number three approved minutes with number eight public input. And they'll each be in their own place. So public input will be at number three and approved minutes will be at number eight. Second? No, second. 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 Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. What's Adam Chair says aye? So, um, so with that, uh, item three on the agenda is now public input. Is there any? <laughs> yes. <Well>. Yes, Nancy. <laughs> After what I've tried to do for the last couple of months, I actually wanted the map and all of the bus trips and all that. I have honestly come to the sad realization that I saw that. I yeah, the look. I have come to the sad realization that unless it comes from you, Dennis, or from you, Katie, you do not want any public input. You do not listen to anybody that's here. You just want to do what you want to do. But I'm also telling you, that's not going to stop me. As upset as I am, it is not going to stop me from trying to help out the residents of the area. What I have to say. Okay. I would like to respond to public input from the last CLA board meeting in September. I also learned that a similar incident happened the month before in August when I was absent. In September's meeting when I was here, I was appalled by the behavior of Chairperson Dennis Kern's friend, Carolyn McCreary. She ambushed me during the public input and also interjected comments that disrupted the meeting. Carolyn made the angry assertion that a COA board member, which everyone knew was me, didn't follow the democratic process, created a Facebook page, and should resign from the COA. She was scowling at me with such vehemence, she could have won an academy. I object to Carolyn's behavior on several different levels. Most importantly, her behavior violated the basic premise that the COA should be a safe space for seniors. Many of us in this age group have suffered loss of friends and family have medical issues and are more subject to the loneliness that pervades much of America. A basic need of seniors is an accepting, safe, and respectful environment. I object that Carolyn brought a toxic atmosphere to our center. I also object that she misused public input for personal vendetta instead of dressing COA business. Her assertion is completely wrong. 
that I didn't follow the democratic process. In a democracy, the majority wins the day, but the minority still has a voice. Otherwise, we slip back into the tyranny from which our founding fathers escaped. Since the 1700s, this has been clearly documented. Google it, and you'll find lots of information. By the way, Carolyn invited me to join her group's Facebook page, Neighbors for the Conservation of Stratton Hill. I don't see why her group is okay, but a similar group is a problem. I was personally upset to hear a call that I should resign. I didn't do anything wrong. And in fact, I have worked for almost five years for the COA toward building a new senior center, spending hundreds of hours of my own time looking at land, studying maps, attending meetings, and doing research. We have had other sites fall through, so I know how disappointing it is. I never heard anyone called on to resign. I've heard, you're against Peroni Park. I mean, you're against the Senior Center, which is not true. What put an end to the proposal to build on Peroni Park was the protective law which required the Park Commission's approval. When they rescinded, that was the end of the process. I tried to tell the COA about the laws and they didn't want to listen. I resent being the scapegoat. It seems to me that Carolyn and others are upset, not that I was wrong, but that I was right. For the record, earlier this year, I voted against the proposal to build on Peroni Park at the site selection working group and at the COA board because I didn't think it was the best option for the park, for air, or the COA. I resigned from the site selection group in protest for the way they pushed the Peroni Park proposal ahead dropping all other options, and there were other options. At the COA vote, I stated I could be persuaded as I learned more. But when I went out in the community and talked with people, I was not persuaded to support building on Peroni Park. As I asked people what they thought, I found out that they were shocked and infuriated that they were not notified about this project, had no say in it, and that our beautiful town park would be the site of a 25,000 square foot building plus parking that would dominate the remaining open space at an approximate cost of $25 million. People wanted to know, when would there be a meeting? On March 14th, there was going to be a meeting here at the Senior Center. I assume that this was for everyone and invited stakeholders I met in conversation. It wasn't until later I found out they were not invited. Then where were they supposed to go for information and to have their voice heard? Excuse me, I'm dry. This brings me to address Friends of Peroni Park, the Facebook group that I started. Several others helped me. Our mission is to protect the park and to share information. The town had not notified stakeholders about the proposal as it should have, such as abutters, baseball organizers, dog walkers, and others. Our group was the place they could turn to for facts and connect with others who valued our park. We gathered documents, such as a copy of the deed to Peroni Park, which stated in 1910 that the land was for a park. We included photos of kids playing in the park and memories people shared. Rita Blake Briggs played in the park. She was a woman baseball player from Ayer who ended up playing in the league in the movie, A League of Their Own. We have a photo of Rita and her mom on 3rd Avenue and other historic photos. The focus of the Facebook group was to share, learn, and protect our park, which we did. It was never an anti-senior center group as some have depicted. At this point, the Park Commission has voted to rescind their initial support to build on Peroni Park and the town manager stated that the proposal to build on Peroni Park is off the table. This is an opportunity for COA board members and those still angry to learn a lesson and move on. The lesson is to complete due diligence, including laws and restrictions, before presenting a formal proposal and to share information with all stakeholders. It's good news that the new building committee will be holding public meetings. To move on, I think the COA board needs to rescind 
our initial vote from earlier this year, just as the Park Commission did. It's been an emotional ride for everyone. And going forward, we need to be on the same page to work together. I hope this will bring more COA meetings down a notch so that other COA business can be addressed more calmly as well. Toward that end, I would like to make a motion. I make a motion that the COA board rescind their initial support for the proposal to build a senior center, community center on Peroni Park, as the Park Commission did on August 10th. This will affirm that we are all on the same page and enable the new building committee to move forward unencumbered by any remaining misunderstandings to preserve, pursue other sites for a new Ayer Senior Center. Is there a second? We have to do discussion first, right? Okay. Or no, maybe, maybe a second. Um, yeah, we get a second. Yeah, maybe a second. I'll second the discussion votes alone. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, as I think that it's time for us to move past where we were with the um, Crony Park discussion. Um, a new building committee has been formed. Exactly. By the select board. The previous decision regarding our moot. So it's time to move on. I know of That's no- That's exactly what this motion is about. I know of no constructive purpose for the board rescinding a previous vote, given all that has transpired. So in the spirit of cooperation and constructive thinking moving forward, I encourage us to move past that. That's exactly what this motion is and, saying. And then Please move please. on and then move on to the agenda as written. And that's all for the table. So I don't think No, we had a motion in a second, so we need to vote on it. I have not been um, deeply involved in this process other than what I've been reading in the Facebook pages and online and so on, and various conversations with people. I want to express my sincere thanks and support for the hard work that everybody here has done. Um, Janine, I saw you shaking as you were reading your piece. I know you put a ton of effort and time into all of your work, but all of you did. And so I want to express my support for also moving on the page and looking for new options. Mm -hmm. um, I came here today because as I'm walking around, I think of lots of ideas that are sort of outside of the box of maybe what you've looked at before, but I don't know what your process has been and I don't have the time to get heavily involved in this, but I have some ideas and so I wanted to come and find out how can I best share my ideas without contributing the endless amount of time that some of you need to put in. Um, we're all doing different things respect that deeply and you know many of us put in a lot of hard hours but I know you have and um, I'm sorry that this blew up and some not very nice things have happened but I'm hoping we can well, so thanks for your input Lori um, in, to your point the, the place for that conversation will be at the building committee meeting which will be public posted as part of the open meeting laws and none of the building committee committee meetings have been scheduled yet. I would encourage you to stay tuned to the town, you know, the regular town calendar um, and just kind of stay informed that way. And if during those meetings you have suggestions or comments about the new site, uh, the new building, um, that would be the best place to do that. Just for the public's information, as part of this meeting, and again, this is the COA board meeting concerned with the activities of the Senior Center, broadly speaking. Each month I anticipate that there may be brief comments about the status of the new building committee. But it would not be the place to have extended conversations regarding why are they looking at that site, why aren't they looking at that site, you know, what is it, you know, this will not be the forum for that. That will be the building committee. 
I think what Janine is trying to do is with what she wants to be sending is the words for the senior center plus a community center. Take the words of the community center off. Am I right, Janine? Well, the original proposal was for a community center, senior center, but it was specifically, that last committee was specifically to build on Peroni Park. And so there were a few uh, bodies that took a vote on that. The site selection working group took a vote on it. And then the park commission took a vote on it. And we also, as a board, took a vote on it. And then later, August 10, to a surprise to a lot of people, the park commission rescinded their approval. And so that's what I'm asking here, is that to put it all behind us and not leave it hanging out there as a controversy, that we should also be on the same page as the, just, park, uh, the park commission. Just looking for a senior center only. Well, that's part of it because now that the original one was disbanded, they did drop the community center portion. But it's mostly to be on the same page as the park commission. And so we can go forward unencumbered. I have a suggestion. Um, I see what the point that you're making. I think it would make more sense to vote at a future date in support of the new thing that the new committee has put forth rather than to rescind support of this one or to vote to support the work of the new committee, if you want to do it early, to vote to support the work of the I, new I committee. I think that that could be the second part, but I think the first part is that obviously last week when Carolyn was glaring at me and told me I should resign, she was not letting it go. And I don't think Dennis has either. And I think this would be a really symbolic, good symbolic gesture that we are moving on. And then later we can also say something more specific. So I have moved on. I was at the board, select board meeting when we moved on. Um, I have moved on by being on the new committee looking for a site. Well, Dennis, I'm worried board. you shouldn't even be on that committee if you can't even say yes to this. Because you're not letting it go. I, I understand your point, Janine. Maybe so that I should be the next vote. I would suggest that we take a vote on the motion that is currently on the floor. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. 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 Motion does not pass by a vote of three to one. Okay, please put this in the minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, any other public input? Okay. So, um, so, Trevor, there you go. All right. So, uh, we have with us uh, Trevor Dilliman, who is the executive director of APAC. Um, I know that um, some folks have had various questions over the last several months about what APAC does, um, how to access the various streams that uh, you can get on your computer or, or live, um, and any other questions you might want to ask them. So uh, why don't you start by just kind of giving a brief overview of what APAC does and where its money comes from. So yeah, uh, APAC, we cover uh, all the local government meetings. We have um, uh, peg channels, so public, um, educational, and government. So government is kind of, I think, what most people are interested in here. We cover, um, I forget the exact list of boards, but you know, uh, board of selectmen, planning boards, zoning, et cetera, uh, all those boards just, uh, that happen at the town hall and other ones. Um, yeah, and then on public, we have a number of shows from around the area, and the educational channel obviously has to do uh, for those who don't know, I am the video production teacher at the high school, uh, so I'm very involved with the students there. Uh, we have like clubs going and things, and I have my classes that I absolutely love teaching. Um, yeah, this is uh, so yeah, with with, with APAC, um, there's the uh, the cable advisory committee. I believe it's called the name. 
uh, and they uh, um, allocate the money through um, uh, Comcast. Uh, so, so we get money from Comcast uh, to develop the station and develop programming and make all that happen. So that's what we do. Are there any questions for me or anything I didn't cover? Yes. All right, stop snickering. <laughs> local channel eight which the meetings are on and everything. Yep. It's hit or miss. You have to like, okay, I don't there's no schedule showing what meetings are going to be held when. So you almost have to sit there all day long, hit and miss, hit and miss, and you don't know what you're gonna miss. Right. You know, the information that you need you may have missed it three or four days ago or three or four months ago. Sure. Yeah. If there was some kind of schedule, it would make it easier for the town right. to have access. I completely agree, and that's something I've actually asked our provider there, uh, which is CAPSIS, uh, in, in, order, in order to implement. We have the bulletin board slides in between the meetings, and I was suggesting getting just a, a schedule that, uh, that pops up every day seconds or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, this stuff is all available through our website, but I understand not everybody has access to the website. Um, but everything is up there if you're able to get on. Um, again, I'm you know, working with students and stuff, so my mind tends to be with, with young people who are all online and on their phones all day. Um, so, but you know, I obviously don't want this to <laughs> fall by the wayside by any means. Uh, so suggestions like that are fantastic. Um, I've also heard the suggestion of like a ticker on the bottom. It's an idea maybe, but it might get in the way of banners and things. But I think the schedule on the bulletin board is something that's it's a great idea. I mean, I also heard just a list of upcoming meetings for the week, stuff like that would be totally fantastic if we get the information that we need, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, is it on the town website? Uh, is there a place for it on the town website? On our website, airpublicaccess.org. Maybe you could share it with the uh Air Town website. A lot of people are using that more and more now. So, because we're not affiliated <laughs> with the town, I'm not sure if that's the best idea. We're mm -hmm. technically a nonprofit, and if we were a town department, I think that would make a lot of sense. But, but yeah. what about just the town meetings? I mean, you don't just do town meetings, do you? You do a lot of other things? Yep, yep. Yes. Or maybe you could have a directory of just the town meetings. Just a thought. We could do that. I mean, we have, um, we're migrating to YouTube currently. Uh, Cast has had a uh, video on demand service, um, which I'm taxing just to save a little bit of money. And uh, because YouTube is, um, you know, it's a bigger platform, more easily shareable. Frankly, most people that use Cast do that exact same thing. They cut out the video on demand piece and then just use YouTube. And so yeah, but it costs to sign up for YouTube now. Say again? It costs money to sign up for YouTube. Uh, no, YouTube is free. Mm -hmm. There's a premium option where you can get like additional features and it removes ads and things, but otherwise YouTube is completely free. You can jump on and see everything on there. And we have our own YouTube channel, so all the meetings are populated on there and the shows and everything, so you can find anything you need on there. I'm happy to assist anybody with that. Yeah. Do you have enough staff to be able to tape all of the different town meetings, for example, the library trustees, um, other things is it do people have to request your staff to come to do the taping yes <laughs> okay yeah the idea is we cover the the main ones that meet uh most of the time um but you know we're, i'm happy to open a discussion if there's one that's particularly relevant or just by invite we're happy to come so what if a citizen wants a particular meeting but the board doesn't ask that the trustee you know the, whatever board doesn't ask but a citizen wants that meeting to be taped can you do it yeah, send me an email. I mean, if it's a public meeting, in theory, we should be able to be there, right? Yeah. Do you have enough staff to do it? To take them all? We might. <laughs> that would be the discussion, yeah. Yeah, it is just a few of us, very included. It's fantastic, but yeah. Okay. But yeah, we can just make, open a discussion about that. Yeah. Um, is it only air residents that can watch this channel, or can you watch it outside of, can you watch various shows outside of the air? So, I mean, you get the, the local station in air if you have you know cable hooked up here but uh yeah i mean anybody can watch it online because everything is online you know, content that okay. yeah. 
when we were talking about, I had discussed it with you earlier, but when we were talking about the uh, channel, when the shows are going to be, when the committees are going to meet, yeah. you know, I made the request to have it on APAC, put on APAC. Not everybody has a computer, and not everybody is able to look, and we were told that if you go back in the computer, go back to the town of there, somehow you would be able to get the schedule. But everybody wants the schedule on APAC. Yep, I agree. I think that the answer to that is, again, like a bullet board mm -hmm. slide of just schedule. The other thing I discussed with you also is putting birthdays and anniversaries and graduations and, you know, and I just heard you say it's nonprofit, so you're not going to be able to charge to do that. When the show became used to charge, so you can't do it then. This is true. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So I can mean, we, people we, still do it? We can still put the, the offer out there, yeah. Yeah. If anybody would like a slide, I mean, yeah. But we take slides by request anyways. I mean, if an event's coming up or something, I mean, shoot me an email and we can throw something out there. Yeah. And the other thing is someone to answer the phone when it's called and not leave a message. Yes. That's very <laughs> annoying. I hear you. I can look into getting that forward into my own phone. So okay. I love to talk to people, so please don't think I'm a good Okay. <laughs> Another thing that would be really helpful is to have the agendas that go with a meeting yep. somehow available at, at the beginning of the meeting. or So if somebody's looking for a particular issue, they can yep. search for that issue and then watch um, the show or whatever awesome. meeting has that issue. Yeah, it's a good suggestion. It would require adding chapters, I guess. Um, so for senior center purposes, is there, that is, if, if there were a particular meeting or a particular outdoor event or something special going on, what would we need to do to get that kind of streamed or broadcast? Or Just reach out to people. And, 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 and how much lead time do you need? Is it like days, weeks, months? As much as possible. <laughs> Preferably not this. <laughs> yeah. But um, but yeah, in terms of um, you know, if it's outdoors, probably wouldn't be able to do it live or anything like that. But sure. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> Are the students able to take meetings like this? Uh, what do you mean? Are they able to? Are you going to let them take meetings like this when their course is over? Why do you ask? <laughs> well, no, I'm just, you yeah. know, if they're interested in doing something like that, you yeah. know, for experience, you know, instead of if they're going to go to college later on for things, but, you know, for them to be able to do things and you have more help. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Is that a Corey thing? A Corey thing? Yeah. If they came in with the adults. Yeah, you mean like Corey check? Yeah. For um, because not everybody here is Corey. I don't think Everybody's correct, yeah. 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 <laughs> Not what I mean, it's a public meeting. And, you know, yeah. But, uh, and for any of the seniors who are looking for more information about what's coming up on APAC, mm -hmm. um, you're welcome to call the Senior Center anytime. I'm happy to pull up their website and see what they're showing this week. Yeah. Um, happy, that's a, that's a quick phone call. Happy to help facilitate that. Mm -hmm. I just put in a plug that you did a wonderful job taping our PFAS health forum, and that's been um, on the list of things you can pull up that any of you can watch if you want to learn about the PFAS issue and the study that the uh, data gathering part is now ended, but the information about PFAS is there. Yeah. It was a good recording. I think that came out great as a group. Happy to be there. I remember when we were there, you kept calling people up to the microphone. So did it all pay off and yes. the sound came out good? Yes, it did. Okay, any other questions for Trevor? Thank and, you very much. And what's the easiest way for you. folks to find the YouTube channel, find your website, and get in touch with you directly? So the website is airpublicaccess.org, A-Y-E-R-P-U-B-L-I-C-A-C-C-E-S-S. 
Um, phone number, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's on the <laughs> website there. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> again, I love talking to people. It's not that way. I'm just not always at the office. I tend to be all over the place. Um, and uh, the YouTube channel is just go to YouTube and search on APAC? Yes. Yeah. If you search Air Public Access on YouTube, you'll find our channel there and links to all the meetings. Um, and there's a link to our YouTube um, on, on the website as well as our social media, Facebook, Twitter, if anyone cares about that. But, uh, but yeah, YouTube is the place where we're migrating to where you'll be able to find everything. It's going to be better than Fortnite. I'm sure my grandkids will go. Right. <laughs> That's a big one. Is email a way to reach you too? Say is it. email a way to reach you too or can you not? Oh, no, no, yes, it's um, uh, AirPAC ED, A-Y-E-R-P-A-C ED, Executive Director, uh, at Gmail. Happy to take emails. And again, I'll, I'll reiterate, I mean, um, my mind tends to be focused on kids just because I work in the schools and everything, but I mean, I'm more than happy to hear suggestions and input, and I want to make this you know, work for everybody. Always happy to hear suggestions, comments, criticisms, or things that I don't share. Cool. Cool. Great. All right. Thanks Thank very much for coming, Trevor. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to say thank you to Pleasant Street. Um, it was wonderful. I had never been at a function that went so well and enjoyed. And thank you to the committee 
the health that day and all the staff for yes. here. They did an awesome job. It was really wonderful. Good. I just want to say thank you. Yeah. Great. <laughs> and whoever ordered up the weather. Yes. <laughs> 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 That's for sure. Did somebody in particular provide the food that needs to be fed? Uh, it was ordered from Il Forno, but they didn't donate it, so oh, I don't know that they didn't <laughs> I thought it might have been donated. Well, there, there are very few restaurants right now in a position that they can donate, which is unfortunate. Um, but uh, luckily, you know, I've asked for the funds that we needed last year in order to have a thriving um, lunch program. briefly address this with, uh, with Lori, the, the building committee. Um, the new building committee has been created by the select board, um, not today, last Tuesday. You can go online and see the recording of that meeting. The members of the committee were selected. As of today, that uh, no schedule has been set for that committee's meetings um, or exactly how the mechanics of that will work. I would encourage everyone to stay tuned to the town website uh, for up-to-date information on when those meetings will be occurring. Um, so that's kind of all we've got on the new on the new building committee. We could go to the town's website and look at the meeting um, agenda or minutes. You will see Robert. Um, the committee voted to create that building committee. And the tasks before that building committee are in that document that the select board generated. So if you have any questions about what it is the building committee will be doing, that is where that official information is located. So I would encourage everyone to go there and, and read that. Can I ask a question? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of out of time, but just I'm new to this map, but it's yet by the um, how do you base um, money for the, the program? Is it based on the seniors you have, or is it so much per senior? So or? it's the, the senior center is funded in two, via two different mechanisms. One, um, there's something called a formula grant from the Executive Office of Elder Affairs. That's um, a state level grant, and that is um, a certain dollar amount per senior based on the most recent census. And so we just got the funding adjusted for the 2020 census for this fiscal year, um, which is wonderful because seniors are rapidly growing group. And so op operating based on the 2010 census for 13 years um, was really outdated. And then the other piece of the funding is um, part of the omnibus budget as far as the general town town budget. And then um, you know whenever we have, sometimes there are private donations or things like that, but um, the bulk of the budget is um, funded by the omnibus budget and then um, supplemented by the state through the funds. Thank you. Is that from the town at all? Or? No, no, it is from the town, the omnibus budget. I'm sorry, the, the town, the, the broader town budget, yep. Yeah. How often do they do you go by the census? I mean, that was 13 years since we last did it. So there's a census every 10 years and oh, then the okay. state so the 2020 census took almost two years, and maybe that was because of COVID, but really it's a, it's a lot of data that the federal government has to compose, compile together. Um, and then that data has to become available and then get verified, and then it comes trickling down to the states um, and then to Executive Office of Elder Affairs, which is the state um, entity that oversees the Thanks, Kitty. Um, and actually, this was 
is something that Mary, uh, I had here the uh, update on, on bylaw review. Um, I, I'd say just briefly, and I think that we can table this till next month. Um, as, as part of what some of the board members thought might be helpful for the center, um, Mary, uh, Mary Markham, uh, who is currently on vacation, had volunteered to kind of look at what were the bylaws of the COA, or you know, what were the uh, what are the what is the document that gives us our tasks before us as a COA? And it appears that um, we don't have bylaws in a technical sense because we were um, not we were uh, not incorporated. Air at the time was not incorporated. It was created in a different way. Um, all of this to say, do you have an email? Actually, no, I, I don't have an email from her, but there, all of the all the town bylaws are now on the town's website. Right. So if you pull up um, on the website, there are um, just a couple of items of about of the town bylaws yep. relevant to the Council on Aging. Um, does it, do you want me to make a copy of those for everybody? I think so, because last time, I remember uh, we couldn't even find the bylaws. You found yeah. the policies and procedures, right. but not the bylaws. Right, so the policies and procedures, um, you know, we were working on a new draft for that, and um, I haven't pushed that out to the seniors yet. Um, that's on my to-do list, but the, the bylaws of the town, Chapter 10 of the town bylaws <laughs> pertains to boards, councils, and committees, and there is an article related to the Council on Aging that's on the website, because I was looking through, you were looking through the old materials from previous board members, we couldn't find anything, so I'll make um, some quick copies of this for everyone to review, and then maybe we can, yeah, maybe we can that again. Um, just four. Uh, and then, you know, if we want to take that up at the next meeting. Yeah, I think that we should discuss it in more detail. I'm looking for Mary's. Um, yeah, I saw Mary's too. Um, Mary's email. I can't really find it. But all of this to say that um, further discussion on on the bylaws as it relates to the council on aging specifically, there will be more to come in the future. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned on that. Do you think Mary's going to actually create? A portion of the bylaws that specifically say council on aging? I do no, I do not. Um, I thought it came stemmed from there must be bylaws somewhere. She just sent by the what she found. And yeah. was it what was on the town website? Thank you. been a, an ongoing definition as I remember Katie you know the senior center and the COA you know a lot of people put them together but the council on aging and the senior center are not exactly the same right right so the senior center is this building and its programs that happen within um, and then the council on aging is a town committee designed to advise on the operations of the senior center as well as be an advocate for seniors broadly in the town and in the state. Okay. Yep. I, I believe that um, under under chapter 10 when the town bylaws it just covers the council of aging. It does not cover the senior center. So if anything with the senior center you can write your own bylaws. If you were to turn around in the council of aging you would have to amend the town bylaws which would have to be done at town meeting to be a right. pain in the butt. Right. So you're better off doing it through the Council of Aging, not to the senior center, do it as a senior center separate and not the Council of Aging, because you'll be able to do that without a problem. Right, right, yep. Thank you. So, 
So senior center, not COA, it's easier? Well, I mean, I, I think- For clearer? Legal, legal-wise, yeah, totally. Well, I think that's part of a broader discussion that needs to happen is what is lacking and why is it, like what, what revisions are needed and where would be the best place to put those. So for example, if you want to go from five members to seven members, that's a town bylaw change that would have to go before town meeting, uh, you know, to change, uh, you know, to pick, a, to pick a favorite one, to change the policy of uh, air residency on the van, that's a, a senior center policy. That's not a town policy that's mm -hmm. in the COA bylaws. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just the difference between the bylaws and the policy and procedure. But as far as the COA board, that again, policies and procedures from the COA board, like how you'll yeah. handle minutes, how you'll do whatever, that mm -hmm. could be. That is a perfect segue to uh, next meeting, uh, next item on our agenda, the uh, meeting minutes. We want to take a discussion. Call. So further, I don't know. So, um, well. I guess we did discuss it. Yeah, so. we did. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we need to. I mean, we can put it on the agenda for next month. There was no motion. Well, Mary has more information, maybe? I, I think she, she may have, and I know that she um, had, had some communication with Carly about where the COA board bylaws fit into the larger scheme of policies and procedures and bylaws. So that would be worth hearing? Oh, yeah. yeah. So maybe we should put it on. Yeah. Um, so in terms of the meeting minutes for, and it was moved to, the, to this place on the agenda, so we want to take a look at July uh, 11th and September 12th, those are the ones that we have outstanding. All right, on the um, third page, I just want to say, Marge, I know it's very hard to do the minutes, I did them for four years. And sometimes it is a fine line, one word or another changes the meaning of something. So I ask for your patience. One uh, I July. think it's the third. Oh, I thought we were starting in water with July. Mm -hmm. Yep. Tell me where. All right, so the top paragraph. So it says, uh, this is revised according to Jay Nickerford. I, I don't know that you usually actually put that in the minutes. I mean, what we do when we're trying to fix things is to fix them to be accurate. I don't think we actually usually say that. And then right after that, you wrote, she has her Facebook page that is against the new building and is posting against the new community senior center on Facebook. I just read a whole thing that, mm -hmm. you know, I was against building on Peroni Park. I didn't think it was good for air, COA, or I forget what the bathroom was. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's a fine line, but uh, I did have a Facebook page, and I was against building on Peroni Park. Never against building a new center. And then, they asked how she can be for them if she is against what is good for them. They did ask that. Well, I don't remember that phrase, but I'll take the word on that. Mm -hmm. The board also has questions and it became a needed conversation. Did you mean heated? No. Because it was heated. It was heated. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer needed if it's all the same very well. If that's what she meant, I can appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So then you wrote, Jane Nicopor said she can still serve on the COA board and oppose this project. I do not oppose building a new center, which to me is the project. This was a proposal. So I would like to say oppose this proposal. 
and it's an important differentiation. Yes, I thought that. Okay, thank you. And then it says, and likely to fail building and run her friends of her own park Facebook opposing the site chosen. I think that's very awkward. I think we can both agree we have something to look for. I think I said I thought the proposal was likely to fail. I think that's what I said. So I guess I would say, Jay Nickapore said she can still serve on the COA board and oppose the proposal to build on Peroni Park, period. I don't know if you need to say anything else. Because we already mentioned the Facebook page. So that's what I suggest. And then on nine below it, where it says oppose the new site. I think just to be clear, to just say the uh, Peroni Park site, because a lot of sites will come and go and everyone's misunderstanding. By the way, that's about the fifth site that I've heard in five years. So it's not an easy thing to do. Now, the expression saying what she wants about the new community building center said. See, to me, these are loaded words, Marge. It's making it sound, you know, confrontational. Just as Carolyn had a site for the neighborhood of Stratton Hill or something, I, you can, I don't go in there and start blasting the senior center or anything. So it was all about preserving the park. All right, so she, it's, it's, when she says, again, Jane Nicopore stated she could sit on the board and oppose the Peroni Park site. I have no problem with it. It's the next one where it starts to kind of run on, saying what she wants about so the senior I'll center. So I'll that I'll next I'll sentence I would just take out. So and I, then I, where you say she will recruit anyone she can to join in the fight. I never said that. I, I never said that. I, I understand. I think, and we touched on this briefly last month. I, I think that we as a board. All right, Dennis, can we just move on to the, le the lettering here? So I just don't, I don't like she will court, my, my, recruit anyone because okay. it was not said. And that's why we're recording now, our own recording and APAC is re recording so that we can have fewer of these. But so I would say take out that center, so, she will recruit anyone she can, because I did not say so it. Would, and then everyone else sees the need for a center. I would take out else. Everyone sees the need for a center. I see the need, Dennis sees the need, Katie, Marge, so Bob. I would suggest that we move on from these minutes. I think we're um, almost done, Dennis. Let's just Marge, tweak them. Marge will take Point a of record, order. Point of order. Yep. She's making her, sorry. It ain't open public meeting. She's allowed to make it. There hasn't been a motion made to accept anything, so there's no discussion on it yet. You guys are bickering back and forth. Let her finish, then see if there's a motion, and then discussion, and then vote. It's the discussion here. Let her finish, please. Thank you. I have experience in this, and I do have sympathy that they're not easy. <laughs> What's that? Including those two sentences to take out? I and then the everyone else I object to because everyone sees the need for a center. So we I'm not here to yank the chain either, Mark. In fact, I actually have an idea in the future. 
If you and I would like to sit down and work on the minutes together, I can give you my four years of experience. Can we finish this? Yes. I'm sorry, can we finish this yes. task of these minutes before we go on to September? Yeah. So for the purpose of July, mm -hmm. what I would suggest is that um, Marge will make the requested edits mm -hmm. to the best of her ability. She will send them out with some lead time prior to next month's meeting. You will have the opportunity to read them and, and then perhaps, you know, arrive at a solution that is mutually agreeable. I think that sounds like a good idea. Now, what, in the what, past, you and I, I had trouble with would, email. Can you email it now, Marge? It's on the county. It was on the county email today. Okay. Yesterday. I didn't look Sunday. because I thought you and I were still having trouble with email, but I will look for it this time. So it was on the lead yeah. time. Can I make a suggestion that since these these revisions, this is the second set of revisions mm -hmm. we've done to these, and the revisions were, were pretty specific in terms of eliminating this word rather than we I think some of this was added. I don't well, remember this from what, the first what I'm, what I'm suggesting is that since the edits are very specific this time, that the board make a motion to approve these minutes as revised. That way we can forward with the minutes and they can get posted in a more timely manner. Okay, I mean, so if there then, are real conceptual differences, I would say yeah. All right, but then, I, so if I'll I go on the email, is she going to send it to us and I say, yes, yes that's what I said, then that's the procedure we'll use. You want to do that? Well, so I would say for the first, the first round of minutes is always that way, put out that way, and mm -hmm. people have the opportunity to make revisions even before, to suggest revisions even before this meeting. But since we have already done that once, and this is now the second time we're looking at these particular ones, and the revisions are very specific, I would, I would suggest, and again, you guys can vote however you'd like, but I would suggest that you Well, they're very specific, and I post until we get So, So for July, my suggestion would be We'll take another track at it and try to get it for the next one. Um, obviously, we had a discussion on this topic regarding the minutes, which has been an ongoing concern for, for many months, I think it's fair to say. My hope is that the minutes and what they contain will not become a, a constant source of grievance. For anybody. Well, I think they're a permanent record, and when somebody reads something that they didn't say, I, it's important. Janine, if you could just let me and finish And so now this. we're having multiple That's recordings right. that will help us. Okay. Minutes are not meant to be a verbatim transcript. Everyone knows that we have the guidelines that I asked for so in the right. from the town manager. So my suggestion would be that the minutes be rather brief capsules of, what, of the topic that was under discussion, with some broadly general points that were raised and a accurate transcription of any particular actions that were taken by the board. Um, no objection. So it's just I understand. try word, to strive to get it as accurate as I possible. I understand. And word choice can be a very tricky thing. It can. And words can mean different things to different people. Mm -hmm. And um, but as a board, I think we need to be able to move beyond extended discussions regarding minutes, which are frequently, in my view, in, interminable. Um, okay, so it's, I think we're all done now. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. How about keeping a tight meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Can I hold you to that? You, with your thousand words or less, yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, so for the, the September minutes, mm -hmm. any? Oh answers? yes. Three public input. Jane Nikapur was questioned by a resident about her Facebook page and said her behaviors, etc. I don't understand why this person gets to stay anonymous. The select board, every person who speaks, needs to identify themselves with their name and their address, and part of the address has to do with they should be an AO resident. So we all know who that resident was, and I think her name should be there. So this is something 
yes. have gone back and forth with on on the minutes, and I think we just need to pick something and, and go with it as far as the level of specificity. Um, okay, when I took over, we did not identify. Right, right. Uh, it's that was. Oh, uh, I mean, come on. This is inflammatory now, stuff. And she against, gets to stay anonymous. It's against you, and you want them identified. I actually asked for but, this earlier this year, too. I but, thought that we should follow the selectmen. It was not identified when I took over. Yes, because I think that it, it was my understanding of the minutes, um, and I think that this is. I think it gives people carte blanche to say whatever trash they want. That the. Um, that public, again, public input is meant to kind of reflect some general sense of, now what we are to do about specific people with specific points of view, I'm not sure how to deal with that, how to address that, either positively or negatively. Well, could I ask Nancy, when you speak, do you object to putting your name on what you read? No, I stand by whatever I say, totally. So whatever Nancy has on. been a popular speaker. There's another person who would like to be recognized. I recently went back under my name and I looked up my history and I found my name on a September meeting with my name as to what I said all throughout the meeting. Did you and object to like, that? Wow, please. Did you object to that? No, I didn't. And I was dumbfounded, <laughs> surprised that it was there. It was September 22nd or something. It was last fall. And I came to a meeting. And That's my what I did minutes, and so I guess I assumed that people would want to have their name attached to what they spoke of in public, yeah. and also following what the select board was. So yeah. somehow, when, by the time March took it over, she thought it was the opposite. So I don't know what happened there. I don't think we ever had a motion. No, no, no I don't think that, again, I don't know, I don't think that anybody is acting in bad faith here. Um, or failing to identify themselves. I'm simply trying to follow the guidelines that we were given regarding how to write minutes or what the requirements for minutes are. Um, and I guess different boards do it different ways. And well, depending this, on- This is more procedural, really. It isn't just about the minutes. It's procedural. So obviously, when I was doing the minutes, I thought mm -hmm. that if a person spoke, they should get credit or blame for whatever they said and also recognition because sometimes it's hard to stand up in a meeting or even raise your hand right. Right. So yeah, sometimes it is hard to stand <laughs> um, my suggestion would be to get both a legal opinion on what you're allowed to do and at the start of a meeting just announce that if you say speak up at the meeting or your name is going to be reported if you just decide to go that way so people are aware and they can make a choice yeah, and I don't know that anybody is, I want to be able to say it, but please don't identify me. I, that's not a sense that I've ever gotten from anyone. Um, I, I do think that sometimes um, when people say things in public meetings, they're not anticipating that it's going to end up on the web to live in eternity, or they're not anticipating that it's going to show up in some official document four months down the road. They just kind of you know, not being used to speaking well, I, in public, they just kind of want to say something. Well, these meetings have gotten more and more formal. In the past, when it was very quiet here, people could talk, but even then, okay. uh, I put people's name in because it was not a, it was not an issue. All right. All right. It was like maybe there would so. be five of us and one guest there. And that guest might have a, a something about the Boy yeah. Scout Eagle Project, and I said, can I put your name in? And you know, or I said, what is your name? Okay, so and I wrote it out so they would know that they were going so, to be in. So my suggestion would be for the board to vote that they're going to, and, and maybe it needs to be part of a larger vote about how minutes will be done. But if you're going to put people's names in the minutes, then you should adopt policy, just like at the select right. board of having raise their hand and state their name and their address for mm -hmm. each and every comment that they make because otherwise it's going to be hard for uh, 
uh, March to write write the minutes because you also can't see a lot of people behind right. you. So yes, yeah, well, they should come yeah. to the table. I think. Uh, Michael Hamill, 17 yeah. School Street, Air Mass. Yeah. <laughs> this, <laughs> with the ambulance association, what we used to do is right before any public input, because you can remain if you if you request to be anonymous, you don't get, you don't go into the minutes. We made an announcement if you request to be if you, you want to be anonymous, then let us know so the name doesn't go in. That's how it was handled. It was as simple as that. If you put that in policy, then every meeting would be run the same and the amendments would be the same every time. All right. So are you yeah. saying what they said wouldn't go in? Before, before we go in, before you go into public input with the Animals Association, we always said that if whoever was speaking, right before we open that part, portion of the meeting, we let them know if you request to be anonymous, you have to let us know and the name will not be put into the minutes. Into the record. Interesting. So they can still put in you can, what they said? Anybody can. Anybody can say, if somebody wants to be, remain anonymous, great. That's so interesting. To, to, to Katie's, yeah, um, to Katie's point, my suggestion would be that we, um, that between now and the next, I will take this on. Between now and the next meeting, I will draft a proposal. And again, a draft, a draft a proposal about our understanding of how the minutes should be taken, what they should contain, to what extent people should or should not be identified by name, those things. I think you're making it a way bigger project. It just has one Did question you? here. No, and I we understand. have the guidelines from the town. My, my objections on some of the other had to see with things I didn't say. No, I, I, I am <laughs> speaking specifically to the point of uh, identifying specifically the name of the speaker and the point that well, that's that's the issue at the end. That's right. Right. So I think minutes are a continual issue for this board, and so I was putting together some policies or just some set of guidelines. I think the recordings will help a lot too. Because I looked, I have gone online and yeah. looked at every board. Mm -hmm. Seriously, every board in town has a different policy. Right, and that's what I'm saying. I I, I think. Mm -hmm. Because the, the work of the COA board is not, the, the bulk of our conversations in the last few months mm -hmm. has been about minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and there's real work to be done by the COA board and we're spending a lot of time on um, approving minutes. minutes. So, um, no, I so are there specific edits for the September minutes? Yes, number five. All right, well, actually, number four first, because that's the director's monthly report. Sam, mm -hmm. mine, programs, fine. Mary Ellen, Brittany, concern of their interviews. Okay, so A, B, C, D, and E. Mm -hmm. Now, F, I would also like to mention that under the transportation, I did give Katie information on the Groton Senior Center per diem van salary which pays more than air, and they just hired two new drivers. I mean, I thought that was pretty important because we've had a lot of trouble getting per diem drivers, and I said, you get what you pay for. And they just hired two new drivers. They're so new, I don't know how they're going to work out, but I think that's important enough for the minutes. And the crop is paying for this. And then, uh, let it, are you Have they hired since the meeting? No. No. When I handed her that paper, I handed it to her and I said they just hired two new drivers. And then I did mention when we were talking about grants, the Cummings grant. It's C U M M I N G S. And it's an extremely valuable grant. So I would like that in the minutes, please. Janine mentioned the Cummings grant, which I had talked about with you a long time ago. I'm just going to look up the 858 seniors, seems like a lot for, uh, for me. I'll just look back at my director's report and verify that number for you. Oh, is that personal program? Oh, 
so yeah, so that that's for not the number of seniors, that's school. person program hours. So mm-hmm. if um, I think uh, it's in a yeah, I think that's one, sorry, it's 158. 158, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, that sounds better. Okay, sorry, Thanks. I don't have it. Yeah. All right, the last one is HC. Eight. This is the kind of bickering we're having on paper, Marge, that I I don't appreciate. Conversation on what the minutes should be. Fine. Mm -hmm. This left you upset. Fine. I I, I'm you know I'm not going to tell you if you're upset or not, and because you're following guidelines, and then you're saying you know you're using the minutes to attack me. Mm -hmm. Every month has something. I have something I want added or rewritten. Well, let's try for accuracy. Maybe we can strive for a, a. a vow or something that and going forward we will try to be as accurate as possible so I think this is where taking broader swaps at the minutes is a, a better policy because you could make a sentence about the board discussed what should be included in the minutes some wanted more detail, some wanted less detail. That gets, again, the point of the minutes of these meetings are not to transcribe who said what and who felt what and who whatever. It's to give a person who can't attend the meeting on a day a general idea of what was discussed. And so then when you take a step back from it and you personalize some of the statements that are being made across the board, it creates less opportunity for revisions when I put the minutes, the minutes are in the email, we need to look at them instead of coming to the meeting. I can agree to that. I appreciate because that. Because then we could avoid all this. Yes. I, I appreciate that. We both had trouble with our emails for a while, and now we're getting it straightened out, so is, let's go with it. Exactly. So is there some way that you could revise that much like Katie said? Absolutely. And then going forward, I'll review it before we're sitting at the table, and I'm happy to meet with you. I don't need to meet. I usually have them done. And again, to Katie's point, I think a general description of what, a general description of what was discussed um, and not so as a, a criticism of another person. Right. Thank or, you very much. Or as a detailed understanding of the intricacies of a particular policy, the advantage of participating. I mean, that would be a different kind of document. Well, I will tell you that when we started in 2019 and I started doing the minutes, we wanted it very detailed because those were the first discussions on the senior center. We were getting to know each other. We were creating the collaboration of what a senior center should be. And so I didn't want it just all general. Some of it was Sister Paula's idea, some of it was mine, some of it was Karen's, and it served a purpose for a long time to be like a transcript. So this was a major change at the end of last year to step away from the transcript. But at the same time, not use it to be judgmental. So I, I think we're all willing to help, Marge. I'm willing to help. And and I I fail that I will look at my email next time. Okay? Okay, with that, is there anything else? No? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nancy. I'd like to make a suggestion when you're working on the crony farm, when we went to the meeting, there was almost a transcript type of minutes that were published, and because my name was spelled wrong, I had to correct it, and it, re- it reflected exactly what I was saying. And I would like to suggest to you that in the very beginning, when you open the meeting, 
that it be said to the community, your name and or picture, but anyone that wishes to speak, their name will be in the minutes, okay? Because by not having names in the minutes, you are going to pit one person against the other because it's going to be a he said, she said. And nobody knows who said it. I understand your point. Okay. And I think that we will, I will talk to maybe some other board members, the board chairs. We will come up with a policy. And it, it may well be what you're suggesting, Nancy. Mm -hmm. I, I know just hearing from Mike that they had a yeah. different perspective on that. Um, so we'll see what we can do. Okay. What I, would, what I would encourage everyone to be mindful of is that I, I understand that in, in public meetings or in private meetings, things can get sometimes heated, sometimes people can speak a little bit before their mind is cut up with their tongue, um, and, and sometimes that's regrettable. Um, so I would just, for the purposes of the minutes, and again, because I know that um, Marge spends a, a remarkable amount of time, and it is, a, thank, it is it's a, a thankless task I for agree. anybody who's ever been a clerk in a, in a, in a public setting. Um, we will do the best we can mm -hmm. to properly reflect the topics that were under discussion and briefly touch on varying points of view and exactly how we implement that, we'll have to see when we come up with specific policies. I have one more question. Would it be possible for those of us who are here receive copies of the minutes of the last meeting okay. so that we can actually look at them and if somebody who wasn't here, I mean, you did it at the other meetings at town hall. There was a copy of the minutes. There was also a copy of the agenda. And I personally would like the copy. I think there is the a minutes. policy on draft minutes well, that they're supposed to be available. You, 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 can, you, can get a, you, you can get a copy of any minutes that have been approved and accepted by the board. I don't Tell know it. about that yeah. because when they were having the building committee meeting, uh, meetings for the proposal to build on Peroni Park. I know of someone who has said that she asked for uh, the draft. I think it was Marge's daughter. You can, you can, I think she said can, she asked for a copy of the draft. draft. It doesn't mean you get to get it. Yeah. Approved minutes yeah. are what are available when you request it. The board does not have to turn around and just put minutes out. But I think there's a policy someplace because right. I thought it was something like 48 hours. Didn't your daughter say that? On approved minutes, anything that hasn't been approved. If you're, here's the discussion July and September. So if Nancy were to ask for July and September's minutes and they haven't been approved yet, they don't have to go out. The draft doesn't have to go out. That's up to the discretion of the chairman of the board. Did she ever get the draft minutes? No, no drafts. Well, she never got a draft So, So Nancy, to your point, Approved minutes are available online. You can go to the. Not everybody oh, has a here. computer. This is what, not this everyone is has a computer. I, no, I, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I understand that. What I'm saying is that the the town's dissemination of approved minutes. The easiest way for the majority of people to get them is going to the website, and there's an agenda in minutes tab on one of the landing pages there. If, if the minutes have not been approved, then it is not a public editing process to create the minutes. And I understand that, I so, accept that. Yeah, so um, we all, and myself included, kind of have to wait until they're approved, in order, unless we were there in person, of course, oh to, to know. I wonder if you can I'm go to the town clerk and get Well, what draft. I'm asking is. No, not the draft, the final. So she yes. says she doesn't yes. have a computer. Oh, yes. No, no, no. I'm saying what you need to look at is, and I believe you said that, that you've got to look at 
I would say it's got to be at least 40% of the seniors in air, and this is a, I'm just guessing off the top of my head, do not have computers, do not want computers. What they want to do is come here and see what went on last month, okay? And I think that that's the way it should be. Don't pretend that everybody has a computer because they don't. And don't say that, you know, we'll go to somebody who has a computer and tell them to get them for you. If they're not posted till they're approved, then I'd kill her. She came down to me every week and said, would you check to see if the minutes have been approved and posted? She doesn't have a computer. Okay? So you're well, anytime you want. No, if, don't, please. No, I, I, I'm don't trying, I can't fix the system of how the town posts minutes. But what I can say is I will do my best to make it available no. to you anytime you I, want. Can't you guys post them down here on the wall the day they're approved? Why you have the minutes, what I'm saying is you're working on approving the minutes, okay? Once they're approved, why can't they be available to people at the next meeting? Why can't these be available at the next meeting? Not just by, hello, Katie. I want copies of this, I want copies of that. You're busy. You're very busy. I'm, I'm trying to so work around March. the challenges. What about, what about as you've done a really nice job thank you posting the agenda out on the bulletin board, what if we just add posting the minutes out there to the bulletin board? Um, since That's we're doing really the bulletin yeah. board. And, yeah. You posted the agenda. Yeah. I think there okay. are some places who do it in a binder too, mm -hmm. because it gets pretty big after a while. So if you only do last month, you can probably fit it. But if you want to look back a couple of months, you might want to consider a binder. Just throwing it out. Yeah, I, mean, I think keeping current on something the current month cycle mm -hmm. just is current. a whole is a just close when you prove them. Yeah, it's a much more manageable. I think you yeah. just say thank you to Marge for undertaking yes. this problem. Uh, posting the minutes. It's becoming a very really <laughs> short about. <laughs> yeah. It's no, always a job, and I would go on and give her credit for the long she's putting of it. into it. But I think that it is something that you folks need to look at um, as far as the procedures for doing the minutes, because if you all agree, it's going to make Marge's job so much easier than people saying this or saying that. She, I don't know much, but if it were me, I'd ask for all the help I could get to make my job easier. But I do appreciate all the hard work she does, keeping up with everything and trying to make corrections and update everything that's needed. It's a thankless job. Mm -hmm no matter who's doing that. And thank you, March, for the time you did put into this. I'm just going to say one last thing on the uh, whether to ask people for their name or not. I think most of us are leaning towards it. And I think Mike's uh, point about it being about an ambulance, it might have involved private information somebody spoke up, you know, since it was an ambulance corps. So, well, it, you know, it, it, we it don't have- call or that was going to be under HIPAA was done in, in the executive session. It wasn't done in open public hearing, so that was different. That oh, was okay, different. okay. All right, so with that, do we have a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Anybody opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you very much for coming. Good meeting. Yeah. Good to see everybody here.